Yeah, I think, I think we have to figure out some ways. I mean, there are things that are very difficult to prototype. <laughs> um, services, I think, are a challenge right now to prototype, as well as physical spaces that are, are very large. Um, and I think, I think we've got to get people um, focused on asking important questions that lie at the base of those issues. And much of that also has to do with looking at other parallel situations. Um, uh, so getting out there and observing human behavior, <laughs> I think is absolutely essential. And I don't think it necessarily has to be in the prototype that you're building. So um, people behave certain ways in certain situations. So uh, an elevator, for example, <laughs> you know, prompts a certain kind of behavior. It tells you something about closed spaces. Um, you, can, you can imagine uh, situations where uh, diagramming and mapping uh, how people, you know, this is, this is the Christopher Alexander pattern language stuff where you look at these scales at which patterns are repeated in people's interactions with the physical world. Um, and I think those are worth going back to, um, looking at those big gestures and asking questions about how those kinds of patterns develop. What does it mean to undermine them? What does it mean to reinforce them in ways that are um, meaningful to people? Um, it connects behavior with meaning. And I think too often we get lost in the objects, properties, and not behaviors the objects are intended to produce. Um, so, so I'm not sure that prototyping is always gonna be the way to understand those things. Um, there's some interesting, you know, uh, Brenda Laurel has talked about theater and improvisation as a way of understanding it. Uh, I think there are some, some nice methods uh, that Liz Sanders uses in something called convivial tools which is about co-creation and participation. She, she says there's what people do, what people say, and what people make. And those things don't always align. Um, we have to, I think, watch for our language in these investigations, these research investigations. Fred Dust at IDEO d described a project uh, to me one time. He said that they were studying the issue of luxury and they asked a woman, what her pattern was in using luxury products. And she said, oh, I don't do any of that. And they followed her for a week and saw her making a regular nail appointment to have her nails done. And they asked her about it and she said, no, that's not luxury, that's essential. And so, so oftentimes the problem is because what we think something is and not what people think <laughs> something is. And so, you know, really understanding those patterns of behavior, not just kind of recording them, but really understanding what they mean, um, I think is, is critical. And, you know, part of, part of your question, I think also gets at some of this issue of um, the, the kind of um, hierarchy uh, across design programs at different degree levels and different degree types. And where should we be teaching things and what kinds of things should we be teaching? And uh, I sent you a little diagram, for example, uh, the master's program at NC State. Because we have both PhD, master's and bachelor's study, um, we have to be really careful about how we define the differences among those things so that we're clear when we're operating at one level that, that we're not confusing students. And so the master's program, for example, in, in graphic design is um, most of the students there will leave and go into software development, but the, um, the task is for them to ask really good questions. You know, undergraduate education is often about finding answers. <laughs> master's study is about asking good questions and then speculating on what, what opportunities there are within those questions through studio projects. Our, master, our PhD program is really evidence-driven. And so there we're looking at how, does, how do we actually generate knowledge and theory that's applicable in practice. 
and those students are not working in a studio way. So the research at those three levels is, you know, that's why I talk about undergraduates being research ready, <laughs> master students, you know, beginning to pose researchable questions, and doctoral students really having the research skills to execute a research study in a way that is um, acceptable and understandable to people from outside of design. So I think we have to, we have to work on that kind of clarity across different kinds of programs as well.